All right, guys, parts arrived. Still daylight outside. And all that right there, them jagged things, I'm gonna show y'all what that is in a minute. It's called an obstacle course, okay? But anywho, let's break this down real quick. So, new bushing installed in there. Just got the seal, gonna install it in there. And yeah, with it, I could take this apart. I haven't uh, actually cinched this down yet. Anyways, valve body needs to go on. Wiring needs to be ran. Uh, pump needs to get installed. And then she's Gucci, all right? So remember I told y'all in the last video, I was gonna show y'all how to mark your, your dipstick tube so it's 100% accurate. Your fluid level should be level with this gasket surface, not gasket height with the surface here. And I'm gonna put it on the case like this, slide it up to that, that there. I'm gonna make my mark. And then I know that's where the fluid level should be when it's full. Don't always believe your dipstick. Make sure your dipstick is accurate. Do the right thing, it takes two seconds to do. All right guys, got a hell of a lot of jamming to do. Charles is on the way, AKA Chuck. He gonna give me a hand with this here 248 pound transmission because we're gonna have to run it out the back and here's why. So this narrow little passageway here, out this door, I'll put a wagon over here and we just gotta get it on the wagon. That's right, Monster House. Happy Halloweeners. Okay, back to the business. And here's why it's so important to do this, okay? So any logical person would look at this dipstick and go, well, the flat spot is where you read it and the top must be full. Right now, the level must be real low or below half. When in fact, that is actually incorrect. That line I made is the full mark. <laughs> so if you're just going based on logic, like there's no markings on this, and you're just like, well, that flat spot must mean the, the level, the top of it must be full and the bottom must be empty. Nope, that line I just made is actually the full mark. So that's why you guys gotta do stuff like that. All right, I'm gonna make my lines on it now. All right, drill a little spot hole there and uh. Did a little gouge in it with an angle grinder. So I know the tippy tippy top of that means full. I can't do that with every bearing and seal you got because, uh, you know, they won't give like that. that. This one has some give. It's, I think it's aluminum clad or some, some junk like that. I don't know. Here's the current situation. We got lights, got a transmission on the tranny jack on the trailer. We ain't giving up. Let's go time. All right, it's 2 a.m. Let's go take a look. Oh God, I'm sore. Oh, I tooted. Okay, she is hookered up. Drive shaft is in. Oh, I just remembered something because I just did the drive shaft. Gotta put the gear selector back on. Uh, you just take an 11 mil. Take that big nut off, it's 15 mil. Take an 11 mil on the shaft, put it in park, and then. Put that 15 mil back on. She's good. She good. Torque converter had perfect spacing. It's bolted up. ARPs, starters back in. I am whooped. I 
Well, tomorrow morning, whenever we uh, wake up, I'll just go in to get some E85s and uh, dump her in here, get this thing off the wheel cribs here, get it off the trailer, and uh, or just do it on the trailer, I don't know. We'll probably take it off the trailer because I need to drive it around the block a few times. Get the tuning back to where it needs to be and then uh, do a trans brake hit. All right, so it's reading 104. It's 82 degrees outside, so it's about 22 degrees off. So if it reads 222, you know you're at 200. Time to flush this tranny fluid. This could get messy. these things. Alright, she needs a little bit of tuning. She's been running for a minute now. Nothing's leaking, so I hooked it back up. Drained quite a bit off. I want to put some heat through it. That torque converter FTI nailed. That thing is sick. Ain't even gonna have to spray, but now we got spray to play with, so if we wanna play, we can play. All right, we got a couple things we gotta do um, coming soon. We gotta just kinda knock out all the little knickknacks and things, and then we're hitting the track with scoots for sure. Right now, the transmission pan gasket is leaking. I don't know, probably just needs a better pan. I knocked a dent down in the bottom so it has more clearance from the filter because sometimes it'll suck to the bottom which is no bueno so when i dented it it might have malformed the pan probably but um uh, so it's got a little tranny leak right now out of the gasket <laughs> believe it or not brand new gasket and uh yeah the steering has a little bit of a womp womp going down the road i don't know if it's because these tires sat in them wheel chocks so long they might have just got a little womp wompy 
don't know. Could be that. Could be something else. And then I just got to tidy up all the wiring in there so it ain't, you know, a mess. Because I can't deal with the messy wiring. It'll drive me nuts. But, Scoots is good to go. She's going to be ready to rip. All right, guys. Let's take a look at this data log and see what she flashed you. I know she got up there on the chip quick. I could have gone higher on the chip, too, if I wanted to. So, that was sick. All right. So, here's where... 35% TPS. All right, that's where I matted it. And the converter flashes to 3230. All right, and we got our zero mark. So at one second, the converter flashed to where it wants to, 3230. And boom. That's where we hit the two step there. At, well, it's at 4,000, but it probably just two steps. Yeah, a two step. So that took a whopping. 3.2 seconds to get on the chip. <laughs> I'm happy. All right, let's take a look at uh, boost. Oh, yeah, like 2.5 pounds there. Well, we can definitely dial that in. So that little burner I did hit 4.7 pounds of boost. But all good things. All good things. 